All right, what is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back into another video. Today's video, I want to talk about Cashin. I want to talk about the issues that this character has brought into the game, how powerful it is, and how I possibly would change it as well. Because there's definitely things that I don't feel like they're necessary in this kit. He has stuff that nobody else has. Stuff that Hyrus has said that they would remove from other champions entirely, but somehow he has them and even has a specific little thing that only one other champion out of 50 plus champions only one champion has this and that's Grok but we'll get to that in a second so let's get over here and let's talk about his kit real quick because not a lot of people still know how Cashpin works Cashpin to me is what you should call a snowball champion why? because you know how a snowball starts on a hill starts going down rolling and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger well that's what Cashion is because Cashion, when he starts he's bad he's really bad like right I, I can as you can see he can do some damage but his sword is bad sometimes doesn't connect it's not much of range his pistol doesn't do much damage right like that's nothing but essentially once he starts getting his stacks and so on, which I'll talk about in a second, he starts getting stronger and stronger and stronger. The more, the more stuff, the more like requirements that he fulfills, like that he puts a little checkbox and a checkbox, and the stronger he gets, right? So when you use your left click, which is the pistol, I'm gonna use a different talent here just because I don't want the mini rook tempo to. to activate but when you use the left click as you see there's a little tiny ball on the on above the icon on the bottom left side as you see there the number one i can even point it out right here where my mouse is now look at it that's right there and you can go all the way to five now what does this do it actually does multiple different things but essentially these stacks increase the speed as what you can move your sword so your left click buffs your sword and your sword buffs your left click so the more stacks you get on both sides the faster the other side becomes right so essentially that's it you use your pistol to buff your sword you use your sword to buff your pistol so this snack system straight away and this is my opinion should not exist um, just like Kasumi, for me, a big issue is when people need to get used to having multiple different firing uh, firing speeds, right? And it's just like, it's weird. It's weird for everybody. It's completely messed up. If you don't have these stacks, you sometimes are just garbage. Even if you are the best player in the world, it doesn't matter. You do not need the requirements to activate the best of Cashpin. So that's straight away an issue. These stacks should not exist. Cashpin is already unique as it is to have a pistol and then a sword for close range. You shouldn't need these stacks. The stacks then also do one more thing, however, which is right now I'm going to use it. I'm going to buy Kronos here just so I can explain it to you. But his Q, it is a single shot that he uses in a straight line, which do not consume ammo. But depending on how many stacks you got, it goes faster and not just that if it does not have stacks it is meant to only slow down people but for some reason I think that was changed for some reason I think it needed like a minimum amount of stacks to stun but now it stuns every single time unless I'm confused with some other th something else doesn't matter either way that stuns but if you don't have any stacks you can see this is the speed of it like you can see how slow it travels right now Imagine the fall. You see all the four stacks I got? Now look at this. You see the speed there? So the more stacks you get, the faster is your Q. If you start off a fight and you need that Q immediately, and if you don't have stacks, that ability is garbage. You can literally miss it in front of somebody, of how slow it is. People can dodge it in front of you. It is bad. And without stacks, making it at a proper speed, it would always be good. It does not pierce through enemies, I think. Oh no, it does. It does it pierce through enemies and essentially can it can stun multiple people. My suggestion to this would be remove this the stacks, just make them disappear. But this would require a huge rework. This is not even the tip of the iceberg. We'll get to it in a bit. But the stacks should just be gone. 
the queue should just be at a normal medium speed which would be just pleasant for both you and the enemies to still be able to somehow not be caught off guard obviously and your pistol and your sword should move at a proper speed that would be you know just it would feel nice for you to play Castrian. um and that's pretty much the first three things now Castrian was never meant to be a flank Castrian was meant to be a damage and it was cancelled and changed to a flank at the last second possible now i know who the person was that did the kit for for Caspian, but I'm not really really tried to blame the person because we don't really know what happened back there and how they ended up deciding to make him a flank. Um, however, the way that they understand that he's a flank, it's because as you can understand, he has two of these dashes, two, right? And it can go vertically or whatever direction you want. In fact, it has a ton of different utilities here that you probably don't know of. Um, first of all, you can cancel it earlier to actually do more damage to people. By just tapping, you can hit twice on the same person. Um, you can cancel it by just, like, at the second person, not just the first one. And actually hit multiple people at the same time, which is the exact same thing I was mentioning. Not just that, but his cooldowns are actually separate. So, for this, I need to explain something. A while ago... A champion required a change to be better, and that was Grok. Grok heals Totem. They changed something for him that not a lot of people know. If I go with this talent that just has three, ta three Totems, it's better to show you. And as you can see, I have no reduced cooldowns of Totems or anything. I'm going to put all the three Totems down, and then we're going to pay attention to uh, down here where the cooldown of the Totem is. It, it will show us the cooldown, but then it will show us the stacks once they are free. Now, pay attention to this. One stack, two stacks, three stacks. So what does this mean? This means that Hyrus a while ago changed the way that this works for Grox totems, where each individual totem has its own unique cooldown. They are not in like a, a line of waiting, right? How do I explain this? For example, let me show you here a champion that has this and it will be a lot easier to explain But for example, Nate's Tyra has three charges and if I use all three charges This will actually have its own cooldown for each Specific stack, right? Yeah, one you see how it doesn't show up immediately. It's taking the time, right? Why is that? So you can't really see the numbers, but technically speaking right now now it starts another cooldown. Each stack has to wait for the previous stack to come back and be fully operational for the cooldown to begin for the next stack. As for Grok totems, that was changed. And unfortunately, Cashpian has that. And that's how they understood that, you know, Cashpian is a flank, which doesn't make any sense to me. So as you can see here, I'm gonna do with no Kronos. I have a 13 second cooldown on that dash. It's going down as we speak. It's a 14 second cooldown. I use them both at the exact same time. As you can see here, it's going down. Five, four, three, two, one. One stack. And look at that. Two stacks. This is a hidden feature on Cashion that there was never brought up anywhere. It's not a passive. It's not on descriptions of abilities. Nowhere. This guy has literally one of the most rare features of the entire game. And this is only to prove that he is, in quotes, a flank. Which he's not. He's not a flank because his left click does damage a long range. And it has a ton of extra hidden features, which we'll talk about in a second. His right click does the fast damage you saw before, even without stacks. Right? His Q pierces through people and stuns them all. Plus, it does 700 damage per, uh, per shot. His dashes can hit multiple people at the same time. And if you cancel it earlier, you can actually stack that damage. And then his ultimate is this crap. That's two in a row. Killing spree. If this is not a damage in disguise, I don't know what is. I'm sorry. All right. I know that his ability allows you to go in verticality. So you can go up, whatever. Sure. But that should not be the reason why this man is a flank. This guy is a damage, 100%. 100%, no questions there, right? And if that wasn't even the worst of it, I think that possibly this is the reason why this is happening. But this card right here, the Thinner Things, 
Increases your movement speed by 48%. This is at 4 points. I mean, let me show you in a different thing. Without the mini rogue tempo, with 5 points. Increases your movement speed by 60% by for 3 seconds after hitting an enemy with love. So, if you haven't followed up for now, uh, until now, Nimble at tier 3 is 21%. This guy is getting 60% per 3 seconds that can stack with diminishing returns, obviously, but for every single pistol shot you do, you increase your speed, your movement speed. This is his walking speed by just hitting left clicks. Is this the reason why he's called a flank? Maybe. Although, there is a massive issue to this. A while ago, and you guys probably remember this, Androxus could use God Slayer, the one that sends something back with his reversal at all times. He could use cards to reduce the cooldown of his nether steps to shoot that reversal into shields, clones, deployables from Barrack, everything that had a red outline. You could do that and you could abuse it to trigger the card to reduce the cooldown of your nether step right? Because of that card existing, right? The, the card still exists, a lot of people still play with it, but you need to hit now, they changed it, you need to hit a player. And there are some exceptions to the rule, like you can shoot maybe a Yin clone or a Luna, or even the Dragon of Imani, but I'm not 100% sure on that one, I'm, don't quote me on that. But the shields and deployables like turrets have been erased from that equation, and somehow, well, Cashpin doesn't care about that, because Cashpin can use this exact card that I'm showing you to get speed, to shoot shields, deployables, clones, dragons, it doesn't matter. Anything with a red outline, he can just use it to get this speed. It's... it's disgusting, because, like, no other champion, they've all been stripped away from this. Maeve used to have the card that reduces the cooldown of her prowl. Hitting shields and so on will reduce the cooldown of your next prowl. Guess what? Now you have to hit enemies instead of the rest. Because it will never trigger on shields. It will never trigger on the poilers like the Wall of Inara, the Beric Turrets and so on. It just doesn't. But Cashpin ignores that. So he already has the feature that has separate cooldowns on his dash, both of them are calming down as we speak, as we speak, then he can get not just this card speed, but his stacks. You can shoot shields, deployables, and everything for the stacks. I will not complain, however, to that too much, because Vora can get stacks for her passive on everything. But these are just stacks, okay? This is just a normal passive of his kit. However, the cards do trigger on that. And if that wasn't enough, this is even the worst part of his kit, because this man just has to use 6 ammo to send a mini Rogue's Tempo. Now you're probably saying, oh it's a mini Rogue's Tempo, it's a copy of the, the Rogue's Tempo, the Q ability that he has, right? So this doesn't mean that it's that strong, right? It's a smaller version. Yeah, no. The only difference between this and the normal Rogue Tempo is that there's three things. So first of all, there's no cooldown for it. It does not stun, and it does not pierce, if I am... Honestly, I, I'm, I would be... Oh no, it pierces! Oh cool, that's awesome! And guess what? The more stacks you got, the faster it shoots too! So essentially, you could just go with this talent. Take this card, which is another card that triggers on everything, by the way. Um, it triggers shields and etc. But this one is with your rogue's tempo. But guess what? That many rogue's tempo here from this talent? It counts as that. It literally counts as that. Look look at when I'm shooting. Look, I'm gonna shoot one stack there on my left click, right? It makes sense. But now let's shoot with my mini rogue tempo, shall we? Boom. Five stacks, four stacks. Look at this. I don't even need to be close. I can just do this. In a row. Keep them coming. Oh. You can just sit back, man. That's nice. This first talent allows you to sit back and shoot from across the map. Oh Obviously, it will not be exactly easy because it's not a hit scan, but oh you can just have fun. The piercing shot, which is essentially another shot, 
it allows you to basically pierce through people, do extra damage, it does more damage than your normal shot, plus it triggers your cards that gives you the stacks so you can shoot faster. So the, the, as long as you're shooting, you can sh shoot faster and deal more damage, pierce enemies and everything. But then that's not the only card that triggers from that, is it? Because, I mean, why would Cashman just have that? No, no. These two cards also trigger on that. This one gives you ammo. Generate 9 ammo after hitting an, an, at least an, a, one enemy with Rogue's Tempo and reduce the cooldown of Deadly Momentum, which is your dash, for every time you hit a hit Rogue's Tempo. So three, three cards right there, these three cards right there, they all trigger from that mini Rogue Tempo. Literally. It should not work. This should not be a thing. This is a mini Rogue's Tempo as just an extra shot. It should just do damage. That's it. In fact, for me, it shouldn't even pierce through people. It shouldn't pierce, it shouldn't stun, and it should definitely not trigger cards. And if anybody is against it, I'm sorry to say, but the Rogue's Tempo itself, it is it's supposed to be an ability. It has a cooldown. With this, you can just two-shot with your pistol, because if you haven't understood that by now, every time you shoot your pistol, you use three ammo. So you need to shoot twice and you shoot an extra shot. This is meant to be just an extra bullet. That was the point of it. Never to be this. This is absolutely disgusting and broken. Too flashy. Of course, that's too the funny thing about all of this is that I've been talking about this for ages. Ages. This man is literally applying cauterize while doing this from across the map, shooting faster as he goes, you can shoot anything. You can shoot you can shoot air, dogs, cats, foxes, shields, dragons, whatever. Anything with a red outline. And this is just triggering over and over. Have you noticed that I am not reloading? Remember that nine card ammo that I said? Look at my ammo. Look at my ammo. 21. Look at it. 21. 21. And then they even did another thing to prevent bugs. Which is funny and just makes it even more busted in my opinion. Because as soon as he has... I'm just gonna use all my ammo here. Now I have one ammo, correct? Let's get my stacks. I'm trying to spend my ammo here. He gets his ammo back, that's right ladies and gentlemen. He gets his ammo back with his ultimate, so if that wasn't enough... This man has everything to be the most disgusting champion in the game. The problem is that recently people started finding out about these problems. Recently people have started to notice that he has something that makes him quite unique and very strong. But why is that? When did they notice that? Well, let me tell you. Up until now, ever since he came out to the game, I've been talking about how powerful he was. When he came out, I told you guys immediately. There was somebody who came over to me and told me, listen, if you use the first talent and you use this card, it triggers. And I was like, oh, and this one here, it triggers on everything. Shields, deployables, everything. These two cards are busted. And I'm like, okay. So I went to, to Hyrus as an AOC and I mentioned this card is triggering on shields, deployables, and everything. And it's also triggering on mini rogues tempo. This is inconsistent, is, is in, inconsistent based on, you know, how the rules of the game have been applied over the years. How we decided not to shoot stuff like shields and so on to trigger cards. But I didn't fully explain correctly, so in the next patch, instead, these two cards joined the goddamn party. <laughs> So I guess you guys can blame me these for these two, although I did try to say the opposite, to take this away of the equation, not join two more. I just probably didn't explain properly, or they do not understood properly, I don't know. But the issue is you can play without these two cars. These two cars are still there. This mini Rogue Tempo is triggering this, is shooting everything, is triggering both of these, right? He has, he, he pierces people with these mini, mini rose tempo. This doesn't have any cooldown on it. And the stacks that you get from this card allows you to shoot faster. So you can shoot that mini rose tempo even faster. So it all starts as a snowball. As soon as you start getting stacks, it gets faster and faster and faster. You get a wrecker if there's shields and just pierce through everything. Just fast, faster as you go, like a snowball down the hill, right? And you can't stop it. But why did people notice about this? It wasn't just like one or two people because there was like, what, five people playing Cashian? He was extremely buggy at the start. He could still be playable. Then they did a hotfix and they 
kind of messed them up a little bit because his Q and his ultimate would sometimes dry fire and not actually do anything. It would do an animation, but no, nothing would come out. But if you knew how to counter that, you can actually just ignore all that. Then there was a fix and it made him completely fine. No more of those bugs, which made him even easier to use. And people started abusing it, but it was still not enough. No, it was when there was a community tournament called Winter Cup where some people there used Caspian and showed his potential, where finally the community has managed to understand how Caspian was buff, uh, bugged, uh, sorry, uh, broken. The biggest issue here was that because Caspian was a bit buggy at the start and people did not want to deal with it, nobody was trying to pay attention to it. They just thought, this guy is weak, you need the stacks, but you can't get the stacks, there's a bunch of bugs. People didn't knew that the cards were stacked, like triggering, for you to get stacks faster and infinite stacks and infinite ammo. They didn't know about this, right? These are hidden techniques. This is not written anywhere. And we've always went through the logic of all the other champions. So we never imagined that these cards were doing this. So that was the issue. The lack of knowledge, there was... I don't even think devs knew some of these things were happening. I think this was all applied by accident. And it just got worse and worse because he then got bug fixed, right? He got the fixes. And not just that, he also got buffs for his ultimate. The ammo, they did nerf his damage a little bit on the ultimate, I think. But he's still, essentially, all the damage that he has is insane. But then, because the people on that tournament used it, people were like, oh my god, Cashman is busted. So now everybody bans him on competitive, both controller and PC. And everybody thinks he's disgusting and that he needs to be nerfed. Indeed, he needs to be nerfed. If I did have to suggest something, first of all, would be... Um, that uh, maybe make his tax last a little bit longer. That would be to counter the nerf that I'm suggesting next, which is these, these three cards would only trigger on his rogue tempo, not the mini rogue tempo. That is not fair. That is not fair in any way possible. All right, it just doesn't make any sense. Then this card should only trigger when hitting enemies, not shields, not deployables. If you want to put this to work when the mini rogue tempo hits shields and deployables, I'm fine with it, as long as it doesn't work with the mini rogue tempo. But this one here, it should you should not have a nimble 7 slash 8 for just shooting whatever has a red outline. It doesn't make any sense. This guy has already the two cooldowns going on its own individually, a feature that only Grok Totems has. Plus then you're allowing him to have the fastest moving walking speed of the game. Of the game. Right? And if you thought that was worse... Because hold up. When he was buggy, I found out a way to play with him. I did not know this was possible. And in fact, there's even a bug still on him that seems to go... It will be fixed soon enough. I don't know when. But you know his third talent that says increase the range and damage of war but decrease its fire rate? War's attacks now deal an additional 20% damage to each enemy hit for each enemy hit in total with your attack. <sighs> That's two in a row. Keep them coming. Oh, quadra. That's the damage he pulls out with his sword. Um, back in the day when it was bugged, the Q not firing, this not firing, it was because of this talent. So if you did not use this talent, which was absolutely busted, and instead decided to use this one instead, you just have this insane amount of damage for what seems to be a flank. I which I understand the flanks do need the poke, but we're talking about a massive poke. That isn't fair in any way possible. And the ultimate also gets buffed the more stacks you got. Uh, the only thing I do like about his ultimate is that if you use your ultimate, you have to use it until the end and that's it. You can't save percentage, right? So it's like either use it at the right time or you lose it, which I'm fine with. Because Cashfin does have a problem staying alive, especially on the current meta. So the only way to make him like the most busted ass thing is with kill to heal, which is going to be nerfed next patch, which is fantastic. But if you thought that was busted, then just stack it up with Lethality, stack it up with the cards that I mentioned, and then just go for it. And you'll see that you can go on TDMs, Onslaught, Sieges, 
competitive matches, do it all. And tell me, how how much do you require to stop this monster that can just abuse anything in the game, from shields to deployables to everything with a red outline? Pierce through enemies, apply cauterize with both your pistol and your sword, have infinite ammo while having this insane amount of damage, and also have hidden techniques to increase the damage from your dashes. Have more ammo even if you didn't have enough already with your ultimate because there was buggy when you triggered the ultimate with no ammo. I have countless clips of me doing exakills and pentakills with Caspian, both on Siege, Onslaught and TDM. This is not just a TDM issue. Caspian is definitely broken and he needs the rules of the rest of the champions to be applied to him. Only then should he be balanced in order to make him go back to a place where he's comfortable, but not at the same time broken. I know there's people who don't agree with this, where I like Cashin as it is, leave it alone, but he's busted. And the same thing happened with Vora. Vora when came out, she was busted. You could do some weird techniques with her ultimate, and that was fixed. You could have almost pretty much immunity with her ultimate, and that was fixed. There was a lot of things changed, so I'm not just talking about the champions that I hate or I don't want them to be strong, and I'm not just talking on behalf of the champions I like, because clearly I also talked about both buffs and nerfs of Vora, and the same thing I'm doing for Cassian. I'm also giving you ideas to make Cassian better again. Like, for me, if the stacks didn't exist, if Q had a normal speed and both his pistol and sword had normal speeds, that would be fantastic. I think the technique of using his dash and cancel to do double damage is also okay, because you're losing distance for it. But it should never have individual cooldowns. As for his ultimate, I would definitely nerf his damage a little bit, and I'd never allow his cards to trigger on shields, deployables, and etc. And also, the mini rogue tempo should not ever apply any sort of effect besides damage. It can pierce, but no other thing. No stuns, no nothing. That is what I have to say about Cashian. I'm sorry if I hurt anybody's feelings about how they love playing Cashian. I guarantee you, I play Cashian myself a lot, and I love playing Cashian, but I do know when things are bro broken, you have to speak up, and that's it. So, sorry if people don't agree with me, but that's all I gotta say. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys anytime, any uh, another time, I mean. And uh, let me know what you guys think down below. If you agree with me, if you don't agree with me. Also, little, little final, final quote just for the video. This is personal opinion. I'm not really in charge balancing. And I can't really force anybody to balance things for me. So me having this opinion does not mean that this is going to happen. However, I would do love for the devs to look at this so they understand some of the issues and then have their own conclusions and their own thoughts. So that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Until then, have a wonderful time. Don't forget to leave the feedback on the comment section. And bye-bye.